There's a saying among Swift UI developers that views are a function of their state. Now, it's only a handful of words, but honestly, it's quite meaningless when you first hear it. If you were playing a fighting game, you might have played some battles, lost a few lives, scored some points, collected some treasure, and perhaps picked up some powerful weapons or whatever. You've done stuff in the game, and in programming, we call this state. The active collection of changes, of settings, of preferences that describe how the game is right this second. Now, when we say Swift UI's views are a function of their state, we mean that the way our UI looks, the things users can see on the screen and what they can interact with and more, are all determined by the state of our program. For example, we might say uh, they can't tap continue until they've entered the name in a text field. Let's put that into practice with a button. And in SwiftUI, this can be made with a simple title string plus an action closure to run when the button's pressed. So I'll say, uh, first up, there's a property called tap count equal to zero, and a button with a title of tap count is string interpolation tap count. And when the button's pressed, I'm going to say tap count plus equals to one. So show how many times it's been tapped in the button, and every time it's been tapped, add one, add one, add one, add one. And that looks reasonable enough. But as you can see, it's not building. It's complaining loudly at me. It's not valid Swift code. You see, content view here is a struct. And that might have been created as a constant. If you think back to when you learned about structs a long time ago, a constant struct means it is immutable. All its properties are immutable. We cannot change values freely. Plus equals one adds one to a property of a struct that might be constant. We can't do that. Now, we made struct methods that change properties. We used a mutating keyword. Mutating func do some work, right? However, Swift does not let us make mutating computed properties. We can't do mutating var body some view. And so you might think we're kind of stuck at an impasse here. We want to be able to change values inside our view when our program runs, but Swift won't let us because the views are structs. Fortunately, Swift gives us a special solution for this called property wrappers, a special attribute we can attach to our properties that give them superpowers. In this case, we can uh, modify properties of our struct directly, and SwiftUI keep track of those changes for us. So we're gonna say our tap count property here is part of our local program state by saying at state var tap count. And that small chain is enough to make our program compile correctly, but also now run correctly. I can press command R to build and run the code. We'll see tap count zero, and I press on it, it'll update automatically. Like this. Really nice. So at state here allows us to work around the limitation of structs. We know we can't change their properties because structs are fixed. But at state allows that data to be stored separately by SwiftUI in a place that can be modified. That might feel like a bit of a cheat. And you might wonder why don't you use classes instead because they can be modified freely, right? Trust me, it's worthwhile. As you progress through your SwiftUI learning career, you'll realize SwiftUI creates and destroys your structs as much as it wants to, whenever it wants to. So keeping them small and light and simple, like structs, is really important for performance. Now, there are several ways of storing state in your program. This is one of them at state. You're gonna learn most, if not all of them in this course, at state here is designed for simple properties that are stored in one view. As a result, Apple recommends we use private access control just to be really clear to everyone, this is a local value not to be shared elsewhere.